Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about Von Tunen's model of agriculture. This video is going to be breaking down the model, what's happening in it, and how it connects to the world today. Throughout this video, we're going to be going over a lot of information, so make sure you use the guided notes. I've created the guided notes to go along with the video. You can find them in the description below. So click the link, open up the guided notes, and follow along. When you're taking notes, it'll help you remember everything. So that way you can do well on your quiz or test or even an AP test. Now, when we get into this model, it's important to understand that this model was created before the Industrial Revolution. Now, von Thunen first proposed this model in a book titled The Isolated State. This is where von Thunen started to actually look at how land was used. Von Thunen was curious of why farmers produce certain crops in certain areas. So he created this model to try and explain it. Now, it was based on a couple different things. It's based on the cost of the land and also the cost of the transportation of the market. Von Thunen believed that farmers were motivated by profit. So when we're looking at this model, we're looking at commercial agriculture. This is focusing on farmers who want to make money. We're also looking more on the developed world. So von Thunen here is focused more on the European Germanic diet. So not looking at all societies within the world today. On the screen right now, you can see these six assumptions. These six assumptions are what von Thunen based his model on. Now read through these as I explain why these are in place. I'm not going to read them to you just to save a little bit of time. But von Thunen created his model around these six assumptions to make the model more flexible. Remember, models are complex sets of data. The goal of it is to try and show us a lot of information at once and to simplify it so we can easily visualize it. Von Thunen had things like, for example, that all land is uniform to make it so that you could apply this model to a variety of geographic areas. Yes, von Thunen knew that not all land was flat, not all land was the exact same. But by putting this into the model, it made the model able to adapt to different geographic environments when you applied it to different societies. So let's start actually looking at what this model proposes and how it's set up and how it connects even into the world today. We're going to now be breaking down von Thunen's model, what it shows us, and why it's set up the way it is. But it's important for you to understand how the model looks, so that way while I'm explaining it, you can think back to the model to understand each ring's position. In the center of the model, we're going to have the city, or the market. Everything will revolve around this. On the screen right now, you can see von Thunen's full model. We have our urban center in the center, which makes sense. Everyone wants to sell here. This is where you're going to get your money. Outside of that is going to be the dairy farming. Then the next ring will be our forest. Then from there we will have our grains and field crops. And further out, our livestock and ranching. Now anything past this last ring is going to be the wilderness. Von Thunen said it's too far away to make profit, so you're not going to have any production there. Let's start analyzing Von Thunen's model and break it all down. Right outside of our city is dairy and horticulture. This illustrates a bunch of different tenets of von Thunen's model. This is actually the reason why it's here is because of the intensity of production. Von Thunen postulated that the more intense a production is, the closer it'll have to be to the city. It'll require more labor, more time, and a lot of these products also will be more perishable. This is also going to be known as a milk shed. When you start to get into more concepts in the agricultural unit, you'll cover that concept. All the milk shed is though, is the range of which you can produce milk or other things that will perish until they are going to expire. So it's a range of to get to your consumers. The more technology that we have, the larger this can be because you can produce it farther away. Back then though, when this model was created, we didn't have refrigeration. Milk spoiled very fast. So you had to get it to market pretty quick. This is why it was located so close to the city. It also is expensive and hard to transport. And so for farmers to make any profit, they had to have it right next to that city. Let's look at the next one though, because that's forests. And that might throw some of you off. Why would you have forests so close to the city? It's a good question. And the reason why von Thunen noticed is that one, Back then, when you're using wood for a variety of essential tasks like cooking and heating, it needed to be very accessible and you had to get it quick to the market. The other reason why though, is wood is very bulky, it's heavy, it's very costly to transport. 
And so if you had it too far away from the city market, what would happen then is you wouldn't be able to actually make a profit. And so the farmers, again, who were motivated by making a profit had to get closer to the city. This reduced the transportation time and increased their profits. So that's why forests are located right outside. This is also already the two main things that Von Thunen's model is illustrated on. Cost, trying to maximize your cost to make sure that you can get the biggest profit margins, and also transportation costs. We can also see the intensity of the work is always going to be located closer. Because outside of the forest now, we're going to be getting into grains. Our intensity level of production is going down. We still have a huge time commitment here, but it is not as labor intensive. And you're going to be using a lot more machinery, at least as the machines start to get developed and we get more to current day. So besides just the intensity piece to grains, one of the reasons why grains are located in this ring is because they're actually pretty easy to transport. You can harvest them, you can fill them in a wagon, you can put them in a truck, and they can easily get to the market. They also aren't going to perish. You can store them for long periods of time, so they don't need to be really close to the city. Also, there's another reason at play here too, and it's the bid rent theory. We'll be talking about this in just a little bit, but really what it looks at is the farther away you are from the city, the cheaper the land is. The important thing to understand here is with grains is they need a lot of land to be able to farm and to grow all the crops. And so it's important to have cheaper land, especially since you don't have to pay as much for transportation. If you got too close to the city, well, it'd be too expensive. And again, you wouldn't make money. Our next and final ring is going to be our ranching and livestock. This is where you're going to have grazing occurring. Now, the reason why this is so far away is because the animals themselves, they can transport themselves. Back then, you could just have them walk to the slaughterhouse. So transportation was very cheap. At the same time, too, when using free range or whenever you're letting animals graze, that's going to require a lot of land, and that can be very expensive. This also is going to use the bid rent theory, that idea that the farther away we are from the city, the cheaper land is. So when we're this far out, land is very cheap. So you can buy a lot of land and let your animals graze. Then when it's time to bring them to slaughter, you don't have to worry about transporting them. Have them walk to the slaughterhouse, and then they would be killed there, and then you can sell them at the market. Now, anything past here is known as the wilderness in the model. That doesn't mean that no one lives out here or there's nothing here. This actually might even be a hinterland between different areas. But what this means is you're so far away from the main market now that you're not going to be able to make a profit. So we're not going to see commercial agriculture this far out because there's no motivation. Transportation costs would be too high. It would be too expensive to get it to market. And so you just wouldn't see production this far out. Now I've talked a little bit about this bid rent theory and I went through it pretty fast. So I'm just going to highlight this theory because it's going to be important to understand both in this unit and also in the urban unit. I'll eventually have another video that'll cover the bid rent theory in more depth, but it's important to understand the basics so you understand Von Thunen's model. This theory is just looking at the amount of land available. One economic concept is scarcity. Whenever you have scarcity, things are going to normally at least cost more money. When you're in a city or an urban area, land is scarce. So you're going to see that rent is more expensive there. There's just less land to go around and we have more demand. Also in the economic unit, you'll get into supply and demand. You can check out some videos I have on the channel already on that. And that kind of explains why the price will raise. But all you need to know right now is that when more people want to buy something and there's less of that item, then it's going to cost more. So for bid rent, closer you are to that city, it's more expensive to be there. When we're looking at that first ring of Von Thunen's model, dairy production, that doesn't require as much land. So they're able to buy more expensive land and then save money on transportation. However, with the bid rent theory, the farther away you go from the city, land value starts to go down and it starts to become cheaper as land becomes more essentially supplied. There's more of it. There's less demand out there. Even if you connect this to rent within apartments, if you're trying to get an apartment in a downtown area, it's going to be pretty expensive. However, if you go to a suburb or if you go even further out into a town or into a rural area that's surrounding the main city, it's going to be pretty cheap. This illustrates the bid rent theory. Hopefully this is kind of making sense. So this is why when we're looking at Von Thunen's model, people who are going to be raising cattle or who are growing corn are going to be further away from the city because they need a lot of land. And since their transportation costs are not as high, they can just transport their products to the market. 
This way they save money and they maximize their profits. And that's the goal of the model. Farmers want to make money. Let's look now at Von Tunen's model in the real world. Does this still work today? Pause this video and try to think to yourself, is Von Tunen actually here a genius or is he just an idiot? I mean, is this really how society is set up? It's kind of interesting to think about. Pause the video and try to figure it out and unpause it then when you're ready to go over the answer. When looking at Von Tunen's model today, we can see that it actually works. Now, there's different scales that you could apply. I would encourage you actually to find a blank county map of your own state and then find all of the different areas that you have agricultural production. Create a GIS map, layer it, put them all on together, and then try to add Von Tunen's rings. See if it works for your state. For the United States though, if we look at a map of the US, we can see that Von Tunen's model for the most part still kind of works. You can see on the screen right now a map of the US. What I've done is added kind of Von Tunen's rings. I've looked at where major areas for the country of where we're producing certain products. Is this 100% correct for Von Tunen? Kind of, not exactly. But we can see that a lot is still there. And actually, for the most part, it does kind of work, which when you consider how old this model is, that's pretty impressive. We have had different things that have changed. We are now starting to see the rise of agro-business, where now we're mass-producing animals, especially cows and chickens, in confined feedlots, which don't require a lot of land anymore. And so that would shift the location of those things. We're also starting to see tariffs and cultural changes and even just different foods be introduced to the market, which creates more specialty crops. So there have been some changes over time, but for the most part, we can see Von Tunen's model Model still kind of works. And so we can see he's definitely not an idiot. In fact, Von Tunen was kind of a genius. He was definitely on to something. I hope this video helped you better understand what Von Tunen's model of agriculture is, how it connects to the world today, and exactly why everything's located where it is. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, I'll see you online.